I, I want to say that you can have a policy describing what the user is not allowed to do, but you need to have the technical controls helping the user to be able to do the right thing. Welcome to this episode of Architecture Corner, Jasper. Thank you. We will continue to talk about security and the challenge of building secure systems or educate the users. There has been a lot of incident lately about viruses in mails. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, an, an old friend of mine resurfaced uh, just about a week ago, namely a Word document with included macrovirus. And I have, honestly I could say I haven't seen them since end of the 19th or something. Well, there were a few beginning of this millennia, but they are very old. And the interesting thing is, why do they still work? Because when you open this document, it pops up. There is a macro in it, and it's blocked by uh, Office in the first place. So the user actually have to activate macros and then run it. The real thing we need to protect is actually our users' behaviors and help them to behave correctly, understanding what are the risks. Should I actually get an invoice with a combined macro in it? So, well, when I arrive to this building in the morning with my car, the doors to the garage opened and someone drove out and I drove in without having entered the passcode. That's one of the things that's quite interesting when you're working with security. They, of course, risk letting you in with your car in the garage, but we also need to check what other things we need to protect in the garage. Why are we having the garage in the first place? And that's quite common when you're out talking with the clients that they haven't got a real understanding of what they are trying to protect. When you look at it, designing a system, there's quite seldom a discussion about what is the information within the system. What is it we're trying to protect? Do we need to protect the information? Do we need to protect the process in the first place? And that type of discussion needs to be included in all types of projects you have nowadays. So how do you think we should solve this with macroviruses? Is it about educate the people more or should we build systems that don't make it possible to use them? The, the macros are quite commonly a very efficient way of doing things. However, there are ways when macro is more or less mandatory, for example, Excel sheets, and very, very seldom used, like Word documents. You need to train your users. You need to be able to test them so they don't click on things. But there are other ways of doing this as well. Uh, if you, for example, move all your mail services to cloud, cloud-based mail that have included some type of security mechanism. So if one user identifies this in one area of the world, the information that this is a virus should be automatically transferred to all other tenants within this mail solution, making sure that you kill off uh, the virus in all mailboxes there are. <clears throat> There's several ways of doing this, and I would say that uh, Microsoft's Office 365 has a component named APT uh, that actually it takes all the files that come, that come into the, into the uh, Outlook environment, checks them for viruses, and if there are one of those viruses, it instantly kills off all the mails globally that, uh, uses it, that has this mail virus included. And more interesting, it also checks links in documents, and if it finds a link that it's either points to some malware or is fraudulent or whatever, it actually blocks access using their web browser globally, meaning that this is a very efficient way of blocking out those type of attacks towards your company. Uh, a few weeks ago, I got a mail related to one of our customers, but I thought something was fishy. So I opened it on my iPad because you couldn't do so much havoc there. Is this a way to handle the situation, a more secure, close control environment. That's exactly what the Office 365 does. It opens up and identifies in a secure chamber, is this a fraudulent, is this a type of a virus or whatever. However, it won't stop 
if there's someone sending you and asking for information, so-called wetware hacking, where it actually tries to trick someone to send you information. It will only protect you against technical uh, viruses. However, opening it up on your iPad, iPad isn't a, isn't a secure environment. There are viruses on all those type of things as well, that, meaning that you need to make sure you have a really secure sandbox where you actually open those type of uh, mail viruses. And that's what the ATP thing does. So it's about both educating the users to be a little bit suspicious, but also about improving the technology for not doing it wrong. Yes, it absolutely is. Uh, I, I want to say that you can have a policy describing what the user is not allowed to do, but you need to have the technical controls helping the user to be able to do the right thing. Uh, you talked a little bit about the new virus, and I also read about it. It was during the weekend that there was a fraudulent version of a program that you downloaded to your computer. It was on the real company site. Uh, we have a new EU legislation regarding privacy, and that could be really costly if you lose personal data. The question is, do you really trust all your suppliers, or is it have you selected suppliers based on price? For example, let's say you send out a newsletter. So you have a cloud service where you have all the mail addresses and the name and possibly some other information. And it's done through an advertising firm that set up a really nice looking newsletter. However, they haven't spent a lot of money on security. They are hacked. It's your company information that you outsource to another company. Meaning that from a legislation point of view, you are the one responsible. Meaning that it's the fines will hit you. This is a problem. And you have, there, there are so many ways of actually making sure that you procure a secure cloud environment or procure a secure service. But you really need to do it. You need, really need to think about what are my requirements for this service? What would be the cost if something goes wrong? So we're back to the beginning. What type of information do you have? What would be the cost? How should I secure it? The three most important things in any type of project when it comes to security. Thank you. This was really interesting to hear from you. And welcome back next time. Thank you.